Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to create a reusable day picker component. We will do so by using my favorite day picker, flat picker, and wrapping it with Alpine and Livewire. It is meant as an example of how you can wrap JavaScript libraries in general. Before we get started with building our component, we will have a look at what the end result will be. I think that will make it easier to follow along with the rest of the video. This is the form we are going to be working with. In it, we are going to build our day picker component with the following functionality. It should attach flat picker to both our inputs. The inputs should be clearable. And we will want to be able to set a date, for example, today on both inputs at the same time. To get us up and running quickly, I have already created the required files and removed all functionality from our inputs. Let me show you what we'll be working with. This is our Livewire component that uses the date pickers on the form. It has an event with a starts at and an ends at attribute. It also has a method called start today that sets both attributes to today. Let's have a look at the view. This is the view belonging to the Livewire component. It renders the day picker component that we will be building for both attributes and wire models to them as if they were regular inputs. And that is exactly what we want, to hide all the complexity of a day picker in our reusable day picker component. Now let's finally look at the file we will actually be working with, the day picker component. I've removed all the functionality from it so that we can start from scratch. At this point, these inputs are just regular inputs. We'll want to turn them into flat picker instances. To do so, we'll head over to the flat picker documentation. We'll copy the CDN for the styling in the JavaScript. And we'll add them to our blade component. To initialize flat picker, we'll need an ID on our input. And then we'll need to call flat picker. Pass the ID. And we'll pass an empty object as configuration. Let's see if that works. Sure enough, it works. Now we have flat picker working in vanilla JavaScript. There's actually still a problem. The second input isn't working because we hardcoded the ID in our blade component. This problem will be resolved once we wrap our flat picker instance with Alpine. Let's start working on that. We'll copy the basic template for an Alpine component from the documentation and we'll use that in our blade component to help us get started. We'll remove these methods. We'll call this date picker and we'll add an initialize method. And in there, we'll initialize our flat picker instance. We'll now call our Alpine component from here. Date picker and we'll resolve the problem with hardcoded ID by creating a reference and we'll refer to that reference here. That should do it. Let's see if it works. And there we go. The first input works and the second input works. We now have one-way data binding meaning that the flat picker instance can update our input, but we have no way of updating the flat picker instance from Alpine. To get this reset button to work, we'll need two-way data binding. To get that working, we will give our Alpine component access to the value of the input. To do so, we will create a variable called select date, and we will bind our input to that variable using X model. Let's create that variable. And 
and let's bind to it. And now we should be able to use a click event to reset the value of the component. We'll add the reset method here. And we'll reset the value to no. That should work. So we can set the date and we can reset the date. And it's working on both components independent of each other. So that's great. We have now reached two-way data binding between our Alpine component and the Flatpaker instance. The next thing we will want to do is bind the Alpine variable selected date to our LiveWire component. This is actually very easy because LiveWire has an amazing directive called Entangle that was created for just this purpose. The Entangle method gives us two-way data binding between an Alpine variable and a LiveWire variable. The first thing we will try is binding to the starts add field on the event property of our live R component. So we'll add entangle in here. And we'll bind to event starts add. That will now get passed in to the constructor. And we'll set that as the value of the selected date. Let's see how it works. As you can see, we have a problem. It works great with one input, but not with multiple. Both inputs are now bound to the same field. We can do better than that by using LiveWire's wire method on the attribute bag to dynamically fetch the reference we need. So we'll change this hard-coded data. And now they both work independently of each other. And if we look in the debug bar, we can see that both values have been set on the live R component. Now that we have two-way data binding between Alpine and LiveWire, the start today button should also work. Let's see what it does and if it works. In our LiveWire blade file, the button as a wire click event listener, which calls a start today function. This function is located in our LiveWire component and sets both the starts at and the end set property of the event to today. And because we have two-way data binding, that should also set the Alpine variable selected date to the same date. Let's see if it works. And it does. As a reminder of all the things we've built, let's finish up by taking a step back and looking at how the data flows through our components. It can go from LiveWire all the way to our Flatpaker instance. It does so because we entangled our LiveWire component to our Alpine component. Then the Alpine component is bound to the input and flat picker watches the input for updates. If on the other hand, we change the value of the flat picker, then the input will get updated, which will in turn update the selected date, which will update the live wire component. I hope you learned something today. Thank you for watching.